You, you are this incredible feat of the first woman in Africa with the Pan-African Channel. I mean, now, now talk about show me the money. I mean, where did that begin? What, what kind of climb did you have to uh, go through to get to where you are? Well, um, it's been a long climb it, and things don't happen overnight. Um, I'm 50 in a few months. I have worked extensively in oil and gas for many years. Wow. Then I started my own HR consultancy firm. Then I did the first Protea Hotel in Nigeria with other investors. I think one key um, takeaway for anyone is never try to do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. Always look for partners. It's better to own 5 10% of something than 100% of a great idea that never happens. So all those wonderful ideas of setting up the hotel and doing the HR consultancy firm were with partners. Mm -hmm. um, and then I suddenly woke up at about eight years ago and decided that I really, you know, you know how you have a burden in your heart to do something and then you decide that it's time to do something about it. Um, I mean, I was born in England, I've lived in England pretty much all my life, and I found myself always being asked the most ridiculous questions about where I came from and what I ate and, you know, did we dance around fires and did we live on a Ride tree? elephants to school. Uh, kind of, all yes. sorts of ridiculous things like that. And you always wanted to sort of find a way to sort of deal with that and knock the nail on the head. Mm. Um, and I felt that one of the most important things to do would be to sort of do a talk show that could travel. Um, so I took the idea to Mnet and they initially said to me, we don't need a talk show, we have the Oprah show, we've got Tyra, we've got all these amazing shows. And I said, they're great, mm. but these are not local shows. We need to start creating content that speaks to, to, Africa. to Africans. That's it. So if someone is going through some sort of domestic abuse or if I want to lose weight or whatever, maybe I can't find lettuce in my environment, what is it that I can eat? So, so it's important to start localizing content. And initially after the fourth pilot, because I've never done media in my entire life, um, after doing a fourth pilot, they then said, okay, Mo, we will give you a platform, but you must go out and look for the sponsors. Uh -huh, so, so it was not commissioned. They didn't commission, they just said, okay, you can have an hour, you know, um, you can have an hour a day. Initially I was doing four or five episodes a week, but you had to find the sponsors. So I had to literally put together a package and go and talk to sponsors and find value for the sponsor. We have three daily shows, um, and some of them are weekly, and some are still in development. And and, and, and when you started, I mean, you, you obviously didn't start out with you know 15 hours worth of programming every single day. You, you know, what was your starting point, or did you launch like that? Well, when we started the channel, um, we signed um, we've signed an agreement with Multi Choice, and okay. the stipulation was that we had to do so many hours a year. And within that was 70% local content and 30% acquired. And we decided that we wanted to make the local content. We just basically, for a, for a whole year, sat producing content. And we had to start from concepts, to scripting, to finding staff, to producers. We have an edit team of about 30 editors that continually work around the clock because we have daily shows, we have weekly shows, we have monthly shows. So it's, 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 we have 130 people working for the organization now. So it sounds like you've seen your fair share of pictures. Is there a snippet of advice that you could maybe give our contestants today as to, to what, what is it that stimulates yes. you and makes you go, wow, yes. I think that, that um, a lot of the producers are basically um, need to be more realistic mm -hmm. <laughs> because they come with ridiculous budgets as far as I'm concerned. And I just would personally or even professionally just won't entertain them. Mm. You need to find a way to be creative um, and to find people like minds in the industry that you can pull together with and work together to get the results that you want. Mm -hmm. um, because I just think that, you know, budgets just have to be reasonable. Mm. Um, we don't have the massive advertising and sponsorship budgets that you get in the United States. So therefore you can't have the massive um, budgets that they have. So I think it's really, really important to find cheaper ways of delivering the same quality of content because we will not compromise on the quality. It has to be first class, but there are ways of achieving that. Sometimes we have to work really long days. Mm. Um, sometimes we have to do a shift. Sometimes we have to shoot four or five episodes in a day. Um, then it goes to post. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's really about setting realistic targets and goals. 
It was something that really made me smile. I, I was walking through the market yesterday, and at the NBC stand is Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives. The Housewives. show we all love, and yes. now it's coming to Africa, and it's going to happen through your channel. Well, you said NBC, oh, Walt Disney. Yes. Uh, Walt Disney. Yes. Forgive me, forgive yes. me, forgive me. NBC yes. do the, uh, the right. Housewives of Atlanta, which is the reality format. Thank you. Um, Walt Disney owned the rights to Desperate Housewives. Um, Tell us about this. Tell us about how it happened and, and how it's going to be adapted for Africa and what, what we can expect. Okay, well, we bought some content from Walt Disney, my wife and kids, um, and some other acquired content that we licensed. Then I started to talk to them about the fact that we'd rather really do formats because the feedback that we've had from our audiences is that they want more local content. You know, we, from 1st of January, we're taking all the acquired content we have off the channel because we've had such bad feedback about it. People want to watch American movies, they do, but they don't want to watch it on Ebony Life television. Mm -hmm. What they want to see on Ebony Life TV is the best of homegrown entertainment. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're promising to start to do from the 1st of January. So in that bid, we've been talking to Walt Disney for months and end, mm -hmm. um, and eventually we signed in at MIPCOM. We had a big, massive press conference there, and it went all over the world about, yes, they're doing Desperate Housewives Africa. And what we're basically doing is taking that format and localizing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been interviewed, I was on BBC Radio in London last week, and they were asking me, why Desperate Housewives Africa? And I said, why not? They were like, but this is an American concept. I said, do you think we as Africans don't have the same aspirations, the same obsessions and the same passions? And as, the same as anyone shopping else? habits. And the same and shopping habits and high heels. And, and and high heels and, you know, designer bags and whatever it is. I said, we have that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's important to start taking these formats because there's no point reinventing the wheel. This was one of the most top-selling, um, award-winning series in America. Let's take that story, let's localize it, mm -hmm. and then let's make it our own. And that's where I think Ebony Life TV wants to play, is in the format business, and to create our own. I mean, all the stuff you've seen today are our own formats. We're going to continue to do our own, because it is cheaper to create your own. Formats are expensive, mm -hmm. but then you need to decide on what your flagships are going to be. And the flagships could be, you know, acquired formats, or you can still develop, because we still have stuff that we're developing on our own that we also believe will become, you know, bestsellers. And it's important to try and make content that can be exported mm -hmm. um, outside of Africa, as well as to the rest of Africa.